Welcome to CivilNet. My guest is Guillaume Perrier, who is a journalist living in Istanbul, working for Le Monde. And uh, we were planning to talk to Guillaume today about his upcoming book, The Turkey and the Armenian Phantom. As it turns out, we're going to be talking about something else instead. Guillaume, welcome to CivilNet, and thank you for giving us the time. Thank you. Uh, Guillaume, I would love to talk about the book, and maybe we still will a little bit today, and when it actually is published in March this year, is that right? Yeah, 6th of March. March. And the title will be? Uh, Turkey uh, and the Armenian Ghost uh, on the Footsteps of the Armenian Genocide. You can imagine I have a bunch of questions in that direction, but let me put that aside for a moment and take advantage of your being a French journalist in Istanbul and ask you about the, uh, what appear to be the execution, assassination of three Kurdish women activists in Paris at the Kurdish Institute. Well, it's of course uh, very sad news because it's happening right in the middle of uh, crucial negotiations between Turkish government and the PKK. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, in the last weeks, uh, these negotiations um, were close to, to produce an agreement, a roadmap, uh, to uh, uh, end this 30-year-old uh, uh, war that uh, took already 45,000 lives. There was a huge hope in the Kurdish population and also in the Turkish population in, in Turkey uh, to find a solution uh, for this conflict. And this assassination, of course, is an attempt to, uh, to stop uh, these negotiations, to sabotage uh, the plan. Uh, so, of course, it's very sad for these three women. Uh, I, had, I met one of them, actually, and she was uh, she was the responsible for, for the, the, the PKK office in Paris. Um, she was, uh, I mean, a young woman, very energetic, uh, young militant, um, far from violent activities, even if she had strong political uh, ideas. Um, so it's very sad, of course, for those people, those individuals who lost their life, and also for, for the peace process in Turkey. shooting, assassinating activists, Kurds, at this time, it would have had an effect on the negotiations. Do you think that the choice of these women and the choice of place, Paris, is significant in some way? I, I don't have answer yet, because it's, it happened yesterday. Um, probably uh, we have to understand why it happened in Paris and why these people particularly uh, were the target of the killers. Uh, but the first question to answer is who killed them? Uh, because there are still many options on the table. It can be, of, of course, an intern uh, fight inside the PKK. It, it could also be uh, the mark of uh, some Turkish nationalist uh, side, uh, deep state or whatever. So uh, we still don't know who is uh, the, the, the killer of these three people option, the interest of the, the Turkish nationalists and such is more or less obvious. Um, what has been, up to this point, what has been the situation within the Kurdish uh, leadership, within the Kurdish community, within the Kurdish circles about the negotiations that are taking place? Are they unanimously in favor? Most of the people, of course, are in favor of negotiations. They are all in favor of stopping the war, stopping the blood to, and children to be killed. But um, Kurdish people are also reluct a bit reluctant because, of course, they know that Turkish state is always uh, trying to, uh, um, to manipulate some sides and uh, they, they al always have that fear. So um, people are hopeful that uh, peace can happen one day, of course. Uh, they want negotiations, and it's it's a huge step that it happened through Abdullah Öcalan because it had to be recognized for years already uh, that he has the authority to negotiate for Kurdish people. Uh, uh, but now um, Turkish government has to convince the Kurds 
uh, uh, that he is sincere about these negoci negotiations. And he has also to convince uh, uh, Kandy Mountains, where the, the commanders of uh, PKK military wing uh, uh, are, are staying, and uh, they didn't um, accept yet to, um, to give up the weapons. Uh, so it, it still has to, uh, to happen and uh, of course uh, European PKK militants uh, are also the ones who escaped from Turkey were the victims of torture uh, of uh, Turkish prisons like Sakine Janses who was one, one of the assassinated people. Uh, she had to face torture in uh, the Arbakar prison. Um, so those people are more sensitive to the issue, and they, they are not ready to to uh, to to, uh, to give up their fight uh, for nothing, of course. So uh, the negotiations are a process in itself. People support it, but not at any price. I can't help but notice that behind you there is a sign that says "For Harant, for Justice," and you know, as Armenians who follow developments in Turkey. Uh, many uh, think that it will be much easier to resolve the Armenian issue for the Turkish leadership, the Armenian ghost, if the Kurdish issue is settled peaceably. Do you agree? Yeah, I don't know if it would be easier, but uh, there is a link, of course. Uh, solving one will help to solve the other one, but uh, which one first, I don't know. Uh, but of course, there are many similarities uh, when you take the uh, behavior of the Turkish state. Uh, many comparisons are uh, available to, uh, to uh, uh, if you if you look at uh, 1915 and uh, and the 90s or uh, even more recent periods, uh, the attitude of uh, the Turkish army in front of the minorities in general. Uh, under the, the Turkish Republic era, um, and even before under uh, under uh, Etiyat Teraki uh, uh, government, uh, as used the same the same methods uh, in general. So uh, of course it would help uh, the Armenian issue to solve uh, first the Kurdish issue, of course. I, I want to thank you for talking to us, especially today, uh, about the situation in Turkey, especially uh, with the assassinations of the three Kurdish women in Paris, and uh, ask uh, that we be able to talk to you again, and especially once your book is published in March, um, The Turkey and the Armenian Phantom, uh, in the run-up, uh, apparently, to 2015 and the, the 100th anniversary. It would be my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guillaume Perrier journalist for Le Monde, and thank you for watching Civil Net.